Welcome everyone, today we'll have a very special Diablo 4 guide. In this video, we'll be having a look what is coming in the new seasons of Diablo, which is coming just a few weeks after the launch. We'll have a look into the cash shops, the future updates, and also the cow level. So there's a lot of summary notes which is coming from the press release and also quotes from the developers of Diablo. And I want to provide you guys with as much information as I can about the seasonal pass, seasonal journey, different rewards, different skins, and also the cash shop. And you can see there's a lot of notes and also information that is given officially by the developers of Diablo. So there's a lot of things we can summarize and have a detailed notes and also understanding of what is happening to the game after the launch and what can you expect with the new seasons. Now we also have a bit of memes and questions about what is happening with the card level and I'll give you guys a few brief explanations of the previous card levels, how that was done and how this can be a live event for Diablo 4. So we'll have a look at Diablo 2, Diablo 3 with the card level and how this can be done with Diablo 4 with each of the new seasons. So coming over to our notes. With the launch of Diablo coming in about two month time, I'm quite excited to provide you guys with all the information I can find and especially official information that can help us prepare for the launch. And one of the first things we want to notice is just after a few weeks into the launch, now we're not sure exactly the time frame of the few weeks, maybe it's about three to seven weeks, we're not sure. But just after a few weeks of the official launch of Diablo 4 at June, we'll be expecting season one for Diablo. And there's a lot of things you should be understanding what is happening with the seasons and how the cash shop and also battle pass will work. So here we have lots of notes. Now the reason season 1 for Diablo 4 is not starting right away is that the developers wanted the players to get a feel and also understanding of the game before they rush into the leaderboard, before they have to start you know, fresh again with the seasons. And here we can see some of the quotes from the developers. One of the highlight with each of the new seasons that was set to be coming, which we'll talk about how many, you know, how many periods. So each of the new seasons will likely have unique stories, different mechanics, and also a very interesting experience factor, which allows the players to experience what is new in the season within the first hour of playing the new season, so that you don't have to play, you know, 20 hours into the story to ex to experience the new changes of each of the seasons. Now the developers have said that Diablo 4 will have a season rotation in about every three months time and this means we'll be looking at four seasons a year and this is going to add new characters, new stories, content, live events and also change of gameplay into different seasons. Of course depending on the size of the update and also the potential of expansion, different seasons might have massive updates and some seasons might have different mechanics. Now one of the examples that was given by the developers about the seasons is the live event. So here is just one of our example over here. So we get to invade an area or maybe one of the areas of the map will get invaded. And this is going to be initially in the form of a short weekend or maybe short period of event. And sometimes you can get strange peddlers which provide us with unique rewards. So here you can see the writing over here, a strange peddler which will provide us with unique rewards. So is that mean unique items that you can buy and also sell? And also maybe you get special gems or special items in the season. Now one of the highlights about the live events for each of the seasons is the high potential, I'm saying this is a potential because this has done with Diablo 2 and also Diablo 3, the high potential of the call event in Diablo 4. So here we have some examples over here. So I was looking through Reddit posts as well. This one is from Toxic Factory. The question for a lot of players is, we have Diablo 2, we have Diablo 3 with different cow levels. How would Diablo 4 do this? And one of the answers I found was that in the previous, you know, patches and also events with Diablo 3, they have been different events with the cow level, including spawning monsters and also random portals that they will spawn in the game on a certain period of time. And this is from May 15 to May 21st, during that period of time with official release of Diablo. There's also a new Diablo merchandise with the April Fruits, and there's actually a special pillow with the car level. So coming back to Diablo 4, what is likely with the car level, I'm not sure if that will come on the first season, but I think that will definitely be coming with different seasons, is that we can expect a car level event with the seasons. And this can be really fun. <laughs> if you look closely, you're going to see a cow over here. The image is a little blurred. But yes, so if you guys are looking for car level, a lot of official media have stated that there is no car level, <laughs> which is just a joke, right? We know that there will be a car level in Diablo 4, and it is likely this will be a part of the live event for Diablo 4 as well with the coming of the seasons. Now going through a little more details about how the seasons will work and also how things will you know, happen with each of the new seasons, especially with season 1 coming very soon after the launch. 
So the developers have said each of the seasons will have its own realm, and also you will be creating new characters. Everything will start from fresh. So basically, it's a brand new start every three months. Now, some of the players might not like this, but other players might find this challenging as you, you know, use all your experience and also understanding of the game, and also try different elements within the seasons and also different events. So yes, if you do plan to participate in a new season of Diablo 4, which is a few weeks after the launch, you'll be restarting everything, including the Lilith statues, your challengers, your raidons, everything. But there will be a new leaderboard, and it is likely on season one. The new leaderboard will be the first ever leaderboard that will be introduced into the game for Diablo 4. So, what are some of the reasons that make you restart the season after three months, right? So, one of the highlights developers have said is that there will be new story content that will follow the existing story and also lore of Diablo 4. And this will be a very highlight for us to, you know, pursue what is happening within the game and also to gain some expansions for free because the seasons are free. And we'll talk about the paid part of the seasons, but at the moment, a lot of things will be free with each of the seasons. Now, because players have to start all over again with each of the seasons, the developer have said there will be free experience boost in each of the seasons to allow players to level up faster and also to try everything faster. We'll talk about the free elements as well on the next part with the Battle Pass, which will contain the free experience boost and also a lot of the boost for the game. Now, the second highlight of each of the new seasons, especially season one, which I'm really excited for, is there will be new gameplay mechanics for each of the seasons. Sometimes a class will have a certain ability, different build, and also different item combos, and also different playstyle. This actually reminds me a lot of Path of Exile, which I played a few seasons, which was really fun. Some of the seasons were a little awkward because I don't know how to craft a lot of things. So other seasons, it was really fun farming a horde of monsters. So this will definitely be a highlight for the seasons of Diablo 4. Now the seasons were also set to create a new meta, providing us with new gears, new legendary aspects, new combination of aspects and also character skills, and also new uniques and also events and also set items. Now, it was mentioned by the developers that side items were removed. The green items from Diablo 2 and also Diablo 3 were removed from the game initially at launch. But they also said set items will be coming back in the future of the seasons. And there's a high chance those will come back on the season 1. Now, set items were said to be overpowered in Diablo 3. Over here, the developer have said that set items in Diablo 4 will become weaker than the top tier legendaries and also uniques. So they will not be the best in slot in most cases for most of the builds. Otherwise, you just go for the set items, you won't use the aspects, you won't use the uniques. And that takes a lot of fun out of the game and also out of the build. Now, with each of the new seasons, it was said there will be new Paragon balls and also glyphs and also legendary effects with the Paragon level, which allows us to shift the meta and also have different class popularities. Maybe the class of Druid will also suddenly be super powered like the Mages and, you know, like the Rogue. But this will make things interesting. Maybe you will go with the Zoo Druid, maybe you will go with, you know, Thorns Barbarian, or maybe you will go with, you know, Stun Mages. So this will make things interesting together with all the gears and also all the new legendaries that will be coming in each of the seasons. Now, one of the highlights for each of the seasons will be the seasonal journey. This means there will be exclusive rewards for each of the seasons. And if you do not participate in this, you might be missing something out. And this will include skins for characters, cosmetics for months and also characters, and potentially pets as well. And one of the highlights for the seasonal journey and also different quests is that there will be an extremely difficult seasonal journey quest and also task, maybe killing a monster or maybe completing a certain mission. And the developers have said that, that this will provide a permanent reward which are very rare to the players. So allowing the players who participate in this extremely difficult seasonal journey to have you know, additional challenges and also feel rewarded for completing this difficult task. So one of the examples over here is during the beta, you can see we're crafting, mon crafting items, selling items, you know, killing monsters, different ones will unlock on different chapters. And this will also happen to the season journeys. And this will also be linked to the cash shop of how you buy battle pass. Because some of the paid items or some of the special items will be blocked behind your journeys of seasons. And until we unlock certain aspects, we cannot buy or have certain items like the experience boosters, which we'll talk about very soon. Now, the seasonal journeys are not monetized, which means there is no paid elements in the seasonal journeys, which makes each of the seasons very interesting and not pay to win. 
Now coming over to our second part of the video, which is about the battle pass, the paid, and also the free version of the battle pass. I'm sure you guys are like me, very concerned that Diablo 4 become pay to win. So we have lots of quotes and also lots of highlights from the developers of Diablo and the directors of Diablo. Notice even the text is super highlighted to show us it is not a pay to win game. The only paid elements will be about the skins, cosmetics in the game. And in order to give you guys a better summary, let's come over here to my notes. So the battle pass will be both in the form of a paid one and also a free one. Both of those, both of those battle passes will last about three months, coexist with each of the new seasons. The paid battle pass was set to be about ten dollars USD, and the time it takes for a player, on average, to finish the entire battle pass and to collect all the rewards in the paid and also the free version will be about seventy to eighty hours on average, and this is over the period of three months. So you, if you spend an hour or two a day, you'll be finishing the battle pass within half of the time. Now the free battle pass is definitely the highlight of the seasons. So with the free battle pass, we'll be provided with free cash currency, different cosmetics with the seasons, and also different gameplay boost. One of the gameplay boosts that was mentioned earlier, because we have to start the entire season on a new realm with new characters and everything new, right? One of the free highlight is providing us with an experience boost for the characters, because everything is kind of locked behind experience. And one of the things that were mentioned by the developers is this free experience boost, there's no way you can pay to access this earlier in the game. In order to access the experience and also other boosts that will help you to have better gameplay in the game, you will be having to reach a certain character level or maybe completing certain objectives and also main quests within the game. And to achieve a certain level of the seasonal journey within the game to unlock this particular experience boost. So this way, it's really about how much you play and then you get rewarded for playing more in the seasons instead of having to pay for it. Now, briefly talking about the paid element of the battle pass. Similar to most of the other games that was popular, you know, you can still pay extra money to upgrade and also unlock all the, of the paid battle pass that does not include any of the game boost. So no matter how much you pay, you cannot get any game boost or experience boost. And even though it will take 70 to 80 hours, some players might want to unlock everything with the cosmetics and also stuff, you know, like pets and stuff in the game without waiting for 70 hours and that is optional but it is not allowed to pay for those and you can see here there's no way you can pay for those and it's really highlighted that you cannot spend money to get any way ahead within the game which is really good and you cannot also pay for the leaderboard so for any of the seasonal achievements anything that is related to the battle pass it cannot be paid for so those has to be unlocked similar to all the other players so the question is, what do you get out of the paid battle pass then? Well, we do get additional cash currency and also more cosmetics that is related to the season and related to the game. And clearly, due to the marketing perspective, this will obviously be cheaper than buying directly from the cash shop for different skins. And this comes to the evil cash shop. Yes, I saved the worst part to last. No, I'm just joking. The cash shop doesn't look that bad, to be honest. We'll briefly touch on the cash shop. Now, we do have a previous dedicated video about the cash shop and also monetization. So if you want to get more information on that, definitely go back to that video. Now, the developers have mentioned that Diablo 4 will be a buy-to-play game, not a pay-to-win game. And there's no way to get any of the power-ups, no way you can find it. You know, everything was mentioned over here, right? So within the cash shop, you will be selling cosmetics and also skins and also different, you know, different good looks for the characters. And many of the skins that is sold in the shops will be class exclusive. And this skin can be used in the future. If you play hardcore, if you play softcore, if you play different seasons, those skins should still be able to be used. And some of those will be class exclusive. Others may be used for all of the classes. Now, from what we can see in the press release for the cash shop, a lot of the cosmetics will come in sets and a bundle of the skins or cosmetics, which will cost 666 cash shop coins each. Now, exactly how and how, you know, how much it will cost us, we are not sure at the moment. But the pieces that was showed in the press release was chest, head, shoulder, pants, boots, weapon, and also shield. And depending on the class, of course. It is said we can also buy those pieces separately, and likely this will be cheaper. Maybe each of the pieces will be under 100 coins. And if you are playing the game free with battle pass, with a free battle pass, maybe you have a few hundred coins. And if you're buying the battle pass, likely you have enough to buy an entire set for one or two of the classes. 
Now the developers have encouraged players to be more creative and use different items that is also available in the game itself and also combined with the skins to have a unique look. There will be a preview feature within the cash shop, so before you try the new skins, you, before you buy the new skins, you get to try them. And of course, the goal, which is very similar to Path of Exile, which I like the direction, is to have a creative game which allows the players to pay into the skins and also cosmetics to support the game, but rather to, to pay to win, right? We really don't want to pay to win. Now again, if you guys are looking into buying the skins with your free currency or also paid currency, one warning I was given by some of the viewers is, especially how laggy Diablo can be, is also with the graphics, that players have raised the concern that some of the extremely fancy cosmetics might cause graphic performance issues. So make sure you guys are comfortable with those fancy cosmetics before you buy them. <laughs> this is the little warning, right? Maybe they're too good and you'll lag out the screen as you find more monsters and so you'll spend the skills. Now before I finish, we'll briefly touch up on this. I have heard a lot of viewers were asking me about this. There may be a new holy class in the future with expansions. This could be a paladin, priest or angel. <laughs> we'll talk about this in the future videos if I find more solid information and that is more official instead, instead of speculations. Now what we're expecting with a future release of expansion with Diablo compared to Diablo 3 is that this may take one to two years after the launch of the game. And similar to Diablo 3, we might be expecting new classes like, you know, Paladin and Necromancer in Diablo 3. Maybe in this particular Diablo 4, we might be expecting Paladin or any of the Holy classes that may be coming. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you're most excited about the Diablo 4 seasons. Is it going to be the car level? Is it going to be the experience boost? Or is it going to be the new weapons and also new gears? Or maybe the new skins or Paragon levels? I'm quite looking forward to the new seasons because this will allow us who might not have enough time to play at launch to still have an equal footing to restart the game at the season one. And of course, I'm really excited to try the call level. And once we have more information on how to start the call level in Diablo 4, I'm sure there's a method. I'll let you guys know in a full dedicated video. Now, before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too. And she's really shy. So I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.